Well, here I am, kneeling on this mat, which I haven't shampooed for quite a while. So I expect it's quite dirty, it does smell. And I didn't shampoo it on purpose, because I knew I'd be doing this demo at some point, and I wanted to give it something to, to test it. Anyway, it's still set up for dry use. I have vacuumed this once again, just to make sure it's thoroughly clean of any dry debris. So now, we need to set it up for wet use. So take off the motor unit. Now I'm looking at the filter. I've not done much cleaning, have I? But it's still, it's still pretty clean, which I'm pleased about. I don't want to have to go try to wash that. Take out the bag. Which is now full of the rubbish that I put down on the floor, plus some extra bits and pieces, dog hairs from the bit of living room carpet. So, all I need to do now, of course, make sure that the float valve is still okay, it's still in place, the ball. All I need to do is pop the motor unit back on. Obviously, I need to remove the carpet and floor nozzle and attach a shampoo nozzle. Also, I need to plug in the tube, the shampoo solution tube. I need to plug that in. This little black end here goes into here. So that plugs in there like that. Push it until it's a nice tight fit. And then the other end, whoops, I've lost the clip. And the other end, the bare end goes into the hole at the top of the carpet shampoo nozzle. I just need to reach and grab the clip that was displaced and then clip the three clips evenly. So I've got one clip near the bottom. Then I need to, whoops, that's come away. The tube has come out of the nozzle, but I'll sort that in a minute after I've clipped solution tube neatly along the length of the extension tubes and pop that back in. So that's it, that's the uh, tube now connected to the nozzle. The nozzle's connected to the tube. Right, there we go. So that's nearly everything. All we've got to do now, move that out of the way, is fill Fill this tank with warm water and one packet of the Aquatronic and Aquamaster shampoo solution. So what I'm going to do now is use a pair of scissors and then slip off the end. But we're going to capture my reaction when I smell this. It could be a, oh, I don't remember it. Or it could be, oh, that takes me back. So, let's have a look. Let's see if this smells. It should still be fresh. It's completely sealed. Let's see if it smells as I remembered it. Right, here goes. I'm gonna snip this and give it a bit of a sniff. It says on it, Aquatronic and Aquamaster Carpet Cleanse. Cut off edge, add the whole content to full clean water tank. And then it says the same in some foreign languages. But I do believe that um, there was a little insert in the instructions that advised you to add the shampoo before you add the water. Because if you fill it up with water and then just tip the shampoo in, like you see on the demonstration videos, then it's not mixed in thoroughly. If you put this in first, then put the water in, it helps to mix it. I always used to give the tank a bit of a shake anyway. Right, here goes. Am I going to be a youth again when I smell this? Well, no. It's not a magic potion. Even if I drink it, I'd probably be sick. Mm. Oh, so I had a bit of a bit of a Zen moment then. A bit of an experience. It's nothing, it's a bit indescript, it smells a bit like washing up liquid, but yeah, I do remember that smell. I might get to smell it more when it's in use. So I'm going to tip this in, and 
can we see it? It's rather a cloudy mixture. Also, what I used to do, I didn't often buy the sachets because they were a very expensive way of buying shampoo. I do believe I used bottles of shampoo. It was still Hoover shampoo. I think I probably used some vac stuff in it at some point. What I always used to do with this, because I never like to waste a drop of solution, what I'll do with this, I'll fill that with the warm water, swirl it around, pop that in the tank, and then I'll top the rest of the tank up with the warm water. Right, so now I've got a full tank, it's lovely and warm, it's filled with warm water and the solution. It's nearly up to the, the top, and now I just need to pop it on top of the motor unit. With the opening here, that faces front, there's a little cut out at the back, which I'm not sure if I can I'll try and show you without spilling anything. I'll lift it up. Oops, hang on. There. There's that cut out at the back, which corresponds to here where the cable is connected to the machine. So we just need to pop the tank on the top there. Make sure we haven't trapped the cable. So we're nearly there, nearly ready to do the shampooing. One last thing we need to do is attach this siphon, 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 siphon. Sounds a bit sci-fi. Well, I don't know, I was probably thinking of Doctor Who. It does look a bit Dalek-esque, doesn't it? But this is a Dalek that you want in your home. It's a Dalek that's gonna clean your home. It's not going to exterminate you. So, well, hopefully not. Right, so this part here, this clear tube needs to go inside here to the bottom. Obviously this is where the shampoo will start to flow through that tube and through the end of the black part there. And of course this blue end is where we attach to the exhaust hole, which gives us a bit of pressure. And there is a nice seal on there. I believe you can still buy certain parts for this and this is this was a part you could replace in case that seal, if that seal perished and it doesn't form a, a correct seal it would reduce the performance. But this one I'm pleased to say is fine. So that goes in then you just push it until it clicks. Then we need to just tilt the tank up while we insert that into the hole. If I can get it in, where is it? A bit hard for me to show you, the camera's a bit high up, but take it as red, it's in the hole there. And then I just need to pop that other end of the solution tube and twist it until it locks. So now, when I initially switch on, you're supposed to have the tube lying down to help with the solution flow. So, let's just get the tube sorted. We need to make sure it's open. Oh, that is surprising. I am shocked. <laughs> it's all ready. I haven't even turned the machine on. Can you see? It's all ready, siphoning. So if I, if I was to turn the cleaner on, it's not going to come out in a, in a forceful jet, it's going back up now. I didn't think it was on. It's actually still, it's siphoned it already. So if I was to turn the machine on, we'll just see if it comes out a bit more. closed. It's so long since I've used one. Well now it is definitely primed and ready to go. There is solution at the end of the nozzle. So now I can get cleaning. Because this is a rubber backed mat, and apologies for the sun coming out, this happens a lot of the time. Oh, it's going in again. Or is it coming out? Make your mind up. One minute it's snowing, the next minute it's bright sun. Anyway, so those lines you can see, they're from the blind, it's not on the mat. Okay, I'm just going to just go over it a bit. 
Um, because it's rubber backed, it might, I might have to reduce the suction. It might be too difficult to push, but let's have a go. certainly see some brown liquid going up the tube. It's brought the pile up anyway. Right, the poop of the pudding is in the dirty water, so let's bring the Aquamaster into shot. Right on cue. Let's have a look at the dirty water. I've still got ooh, probably half a tank still left, so there's enough shampoo, I'll do a bit of upholstery cleaning next. Let's just take off the hose and then we can have a look. Ah, well already, it's, well, it's had a little bit of a spill. I can see that's pretty dirty. You know, this is dirty, dirty water. Look at that. It's, it's fantastic, this cleaner. This is better than the vac. If you look back on my video um, videos, I recorded a vintage fax machine. Again, it was brand new when I got it, but still vintage. And it would have been about the same era as the Aquamaster. And I don't think I got such good results. Still got, you know, still got a lot of dirt out. But this, this is dirt. Look at that. You can see it better now. Oh, oh, it's spilling. Oh no. What is a boy to do? Oh, I've made a right old mess again. I'm going to have to do it all over again, but not for this video. I think you've seen enough. But what I'm going to do, actually, in order to demonstrate the hard floor power sponge, which I'll be doing shortly, I'm going to pour some of this filthy water on the floor, let it dry, and then We'll see if we can remove it with a power sponge. But before then, I'm going to connect the shampoo upholstery nozzle and we'll give my upholstery a bit of a spruce up. Now, although that water that I've just thrown on my floor looks fairly clean, that is actually some of the contents of the dirty water tank that you saw me removing from the entrance mat. So I'm going to leave that, It'll probably take quite a while in this weather, but I'm going to leave that to dry so it's going to dry into quite a mess and then we're going to use the power sponge and do a, a clean path hopefully in the middle of that 
see how effective the hard floor attachment is. Well, while we're waiting for that to dry, we might as well see how it copes on upholstery. So I'll attach the upholstery nozzle and have a go at one of my dining chairs. So this is one of my dining chairs. Now I have wet cleaned this material before and it's been fine. It looks a bit dodgy when I first do it, but it dries okay. This is a sort of a suede finish. It's not real suede. In fact, this chair is called Roger, believe it or not. I don't know if it still has its name underneath. Oh, we took them off. What a shame. But anyway, this is a chair from Ikea we bought a few years ago and they happen to be called Roger. So, of course, you can imagine the hilarity in our household when we have guests over for a sophisticated dinner party and uh, we say, would you like to sit on Roger? And they say, oh, well, we didn't know it was that sort of a party. Is it one where you throw, throw the key rings into the middle of the uh, room and see what car you can get? Well, no. But anyway, if any of our guests do sit on these chairs, they are, in fact, sitting on Roger. Let's see how it's... Well, I could almost write a rude word in that, couldn't I? Don't know if you can see it. Oh, it doesn't show. Oh, it's a good job. It doesn't show up. Oh, slightly. Bum. Now, I know bum in America is um, another word for a tramp or a homeless person. But for us, bum is our bottom. Anyway, enough of the lessons. Now, this chair, it's, it's got a few bits of, you can't see very clearly, but it's got some gravy browning on. I won't explain how I got gravy browning on this chair, but it was through demonstrating another machine. So anyway, there are some little bits. It's not filthy dirty, but I just want to see, in principle, if the Aquamaster will work. Now, I've got the Aquamaster on the floor. I've not raised it up, and I have a feeling it might be okay on this chair. It's only when you come to doing the stairs where it will struggle. You'll probably be able to do some of the stairs with this, um, using the gravity uh, slash pressurized system, but uh, once you get a bit a bit too high up above the machine, it stops the shampoo from flowing. But I think, because of the nature of this chair, because it'll help suck the solution through, because it does create a seal, I think it should work. Anyway, there's only one way to find out. Switch on and let's go. <laughs> very successful. I'm going to have to put the Aquamaster on the kitchen table so gravity can help the solution flow. So as you can see I've raised the Aquamaster above the level of the surface I'm cleaning so now I should have no trouble cleaning the seat of this chair. Obviously you only have to do this when you're cleaning above the floor. When you're cleaning the floor surface whether you're cleaning a carpet or a hard floor you don't need to do this. But because there's no pump in this machine, unlike the later Hoover did the Aquajet, which was a later variant of this, it was the same body shape as the Aquamaster, but it did incorporate a pump. But unfortunately incorporated one of those wide spray nozzles. I would have rather have liked it to have still had this sort of nozzle, but pumped. That would have, to me, would have been fantastic. But anyway, enough of that. Now it's raised up. We should have no trouble cleaning this chair. Right, so I just need to switch on and release the shampoo by pulling that lever back and go over this area and clean it.
Well, that's the seat well and truly cleaned. It's of course damp to the touch and I wouldn't want to sit on it because I would get a wet bottom. But in an hour or so that will be dry enough for any guest to sit on and I know that it's now spotlessly clean. The bits of gravy browning that had uh, spilt on it have gone and it's freshened up the fabric. Once that's dry it'll be absolutely fantastic. Well it looks like I've got quite some time to wait for this floor to dry. I did rather saturate it. So I'll go off and have a little break while this is drying and I'll be back with the power sponge fitted and we'll see if it's going to make a difference to the floor. I think it will do. So I'm going to grab myself a cup of coffee, have a sit down and hopefully by the time I've finished this floor will be dry. But for you I will be back in a second because obviously I'm going to pause the camera. I'm not going to film myself having a cup of coffee. So when I'm back we're going to have a demonstration of the Hoover Aquamaster power sponge. Well, my floor is dry now, it took an absolute age, but it's not clean. I know it's not clean because the water that was drying on the floor was obviously the filthy water that had emptied out of the Aquamaster. Well, I've used up all the shampoo, so I've refilled this tank with the warm water and I've put some of this solution in. This came with my power sponge and it's designed for carpets and hard floors. It's a dual purpose shampoo. I'm not really sure um, I agree with having a shampoo for two things because I would have thought a floor needs a different sort of cleaning solution to a, to a carpet. But anyway, this is designed for carpets and hard floors. It's designed for the Aquamaster and it's designed to be used with a power sponge because the power sponge is actually illustrated on the packet there, on the bottle. Now I've, I've measured out, well I haven't measured, this actually comes in a measure of three. So there's three full tanks worth of solution and there's three lines on the bottle. So I poured out a third of the contents of this into the clean water tank, topped that up with the hot water, mixed it up and we're ready to go. I've of course fitted the power sponge onto the end of the cleaner. So here we have it. Brand new, factory fresh, never seen any dirt. And um, I'm going to see how it goes. I'm going to apply the solution, which will obviously come out through the sponge, agitate the solution as I'm applying it. Then I'm going to use the trigger on the handle to close the solution flow and then go over it with a squeegee which hopefully should dry the, dry the floor, I think he said carpet, <laughs> to dry the floor. So here goes, let's have a demo. <laughs>
done a pretty good job of the floor. That is certainly clean and it didn't take very long to dry, but it's took some getting used to the way it cleans because unlike really most of the other hard floor washers I've tried, they actually dry the floor on the reverse stroke. Well, the power sponge is completely the opposite to that. You dry the floor on the forward stroke. So what you're supposed to do is while you're applying the solution, you have the nozzle tilted forward. So the sponge is in contact with the floor and this brush at the front of the nozzle. So basically you apply the solution. I won't turn the machine on, but I can let the solution flow. Bit of a bit of rice there, got caught somewhere. So, the solution is starting to flow even with the machine off. So what you're supposed to do is have it at an angle. Let's go back a bit so you can see a bit better. Have it at an angle like that and wet the floor, scrub the solution in. But to remove the solution, obviously you turn off the solution trigger so it's not putting any more solution on the floor. Then you're supposed to put the nozzle down flat and go forwards to remove the liquid, like this. So it does dry, it's pretty dry already. It does tend to, it's the first time I've experienced this, it snow ploughs the water a bit. So there is a little line of water, but again, just like a, a dry vacuum that snow ploughs, you just have to lift the nozzle over. So basically, the way you'd clean the floor, as I said before, you'd have the machine running, tilt the nozzle upwards, section of floor, you're supposed to do it in sections according to the instructions. So I've agitated the water and solution on the hard floor and now by drying it it's basically really just a forward motion. time this was still a better option although a more inconvenient option but it was still better than using a mop and bucket because like all systems like this you're still only using clean water on the floor the clean solution is always going to the sponge never dirty solution and you're always suctioning up the majority of the water so the floor dries quite quickly but for the time I don't suppose many people would have bothered using this attachment if it came free sometimes they were bundled with um, the Aqua Master I used to get this as a bundle in certain places like electricity board. I expect because there's quite a few of these I found on eBay unused, I expect a lot of people didn't bother using them. But it's worth it, it's worth the effort, but uh, it is quite a lot of effort to go to. I'd rather use my floor mate, but as I said, for the time, things like the floor mate didn't exist when this Aqua Master came out, so. I still think this is one of the better options to clean your hard floors with. Whew, well, I'm absolutely pooped. That's been one epic vacuum cleaner demonstration. I hope that's satisfied all you folk that have been nagging me for what seems like months. I know it's my own fault. I shouldn't upload an unboxing until I've actually completed the demo video, I suppose. But, you know, what can you do? Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video, I hope you found it interesting. If you've stayed right to the end, you must be a fan. And if you are a fan and you're not subscribing to my channel, why not? Please subscribe and you'll be updated every time I upload a new video. Also, I'm on Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter where I upload quite a lot of exclusive vacuum content. You'll see a few pictures of upcoming machines that I'm going to review or unbox. I always put those on Twitter. There's other bits and pieces on Twitter as well. I put links to various 
bits and pieces, not all vacuum related, but it is quite a lot of vacuum related stuff on Twitter. Don't bother with Facebook, I don't use it very much. So don't try and befriend me on Facebook because if I don't know you, I've stopped I've stopped accepting friend requests from total strangers. So uh, don't take it personal. It's because my mum follows me on Facebook and I, you know, she doesn't know about Twitter, so I can be a bit freer there, you know. So anyway, that's it. That's the end. Please stay tuned. A lot more to come. In fact, I've just been scheduling my videos, getting them ready. And I've got enough content to last me well into June before I have to purchase any new vacuum cleaners. So there's still several months more of vacuum fun to come. So until then, it's goodbye for me and I'll see you soon.